Hello everyone, this is Amity Sensei. Today I'll introduce you to all the new features that are available in Adobe Fresco. There were some major updates last month in May 2020, and many interesting features have been added. And there are some of them you can't find in Procreate, which is an app I often use, so I want you to remember them today. The app icon has changed a lot too. It used to be light green in color, but now it's blue. I was actually surprised by this change. The color of other icons of Adobe apps have changed too, and they don't have the frame anymore. What I'm showing you right now are apps for both images and videos, but for videos we have Premiere Pro, Lush, After Effects, and Character Animator. The icons for these apps are purple now, and for the bottom we have apps for images. So we have Photoshop, Lightroom, Lightroom Classic, and Fresco. And these are now blue in color. Honestly, I'm not too sure why Fresco is put together with these photo apps in blue, but all in all, they are now categorized like this, so please remember. Regarding my tutorial on Adobe Fresco, I'll have two videos on it. In today's video, which will last for around 10 minutes, I'll introduce you to 7 new features in Adobe Fresco. In my next video, I will draw a realistic donut like this using those new features. You get to express the chocolate part of this donut like here way better using new brushes and draw the bun easily too, so it'd be great if you could watch two videos including this one and the next one covering this topic. Once you open Adobe Fresco, the first thing to do is that there should be a create new option at the bottom left, so tap it to start. Once you tap it, you can choose the canvas size, so this time set the current screen size. As you select this, the canvas with the size of your iPad screen should be set. For Adobe Fresco, I suggest drawing with a dark mode turned on. As you select from the top right to the bottom like this, a control center should appear. Long tap the brightness panel, and here you can choose the dark mode to be turned on or off. If you set a dark mode, the area around the canvas becomes black, leaving only the canvas white in color. This makes it easier for you to figure out where the canvas can be found, so I highly suggest setting a dark mode turn on. First, I'll talk about the straight line tool. You can use any brush, but I'm going to use this one called the Sharp Inca brush, which can be found in a box called Comic. This straight line tool can be found in Procreate, but here in Adobe Fresco, it used to be impossible to draw a nice straight line. But as you pull the line and long tap it, now you can draw a beautiful straight line. I assume there are many of you who wanted to have this feature badly, and now it's finally available. This works with a straight line, but it doesn't work with the rectangle or circle yet. In Procreate, you just have to draw a circle randomly and hold it, and it would automatically draw a nice over shape or something, but for now in Fresco, it only works with a straight line. There are a few things to do in the settings in case you want to use this straight line tool. Go to Application Settings from Settings, and select the option that says Input in a sidebar on the left. There you can find a category that says snap line, and as long as you set this turn on, you can draw a straight line. You can draw a straight line if it's turned off, so make sure to set it on if you want to use this feature. Similar to this straight line tool, we now have this thing called a ruler tool. There is this ruler mark at the bottom right, and as you tap this, a ruler shows up like this on the screen. So this will also work when you want to draw a straight line. It's better to use this ruler tool when you want to draw multiple lines. Next about shape tool. There is a new category added here in the toolbar on the left, the fifth one from the top. And as you tap this, you can find basic shapes at the very top right here. Here we have new options including circle, square as well as polygon. So for those who want to draw some beautiful shapes such as over shape and rectangle, this is where you start. For your polygon, by tapping on these plus and minus buttons like this, you can set it to have more or less edges. 
In case you want to fill in the color, there's an option that says fill at the bottom. So tap fill, click on the pixel button for instance, and this way you get to fill in the color inside the polygon you just created. So regarding the updates made this time for Adobe Fresco, I feel like they've done a lot of special on this stuff which can be helpful when creating beautiful shapes like this. Adobe Fresco used to be taken as something used for rather analog-like impressions with the use of watercolor brush or oil painting brush or smudges, but with the updates made this time, we can now draw a stylish illustration like this. Now I'll introduce you to the fourth tool called Vector Trim. In Adobe Fresco, we have this thing called Vector Tool. The third one from the top in the toolbar on the left, we have this brush called Vector Brush that lets you draw lines with paths called Vector. Let me show you an example here. With this brush, I can draw a really smooth curved line like this. For the line drawn using the Vector Tool, no matter how much you zoom in, it remains as a beautiful straight line. It gets kind of jaggy when you do the same using pixel brush or any other brushes as you zoom in. But with this vector brush, the smooth curved line remains the same no matter what. Using this vector brush, you could send the data to Illustrator and edit pass too. But there are some updates on that as well. If I draw a complex pattern design like this for instance, Yet I want to remove the pad sticking out or trim a part of it. It's really helpful to use this vector trim feature. But a way to do that is first you can find a circular button that says touch shortcuts at the bottom left right here. So double tap it. This way only the center or the edge gets color in blue. But while having the edge color in blue, try and trace any parts sticking out like here. This way, a part of the vector gets removed. This is pretty nice, right? You have to trace with the brush nicely using eraser, but with this vector trim feature, it cuts off a part of the vector or the path and deletes it. So just like this, you can adjust them and create a beautiful pattern. For these touch shortcuts at the bottom left, which was mentioned earlier too, it used to be a feature where it switches to eraser as you trace while touching them. But with the updates this time, we can double tap and apply two shortcuts right here. With blue color set for the center, it's just an eraser. And with the edge color in blue, it indicates the vector trim feature is set. This way you can trim or erase with the eraser later too. So just remember that we have these two features touch shortcuts are right here. And this is the fifth new feature. About this vector trim feature, you can create some interesting stuff using the ruler to explain earlier. Right now, I'm drawing a great pattern using a vector brush with the ruler tool. Once it's complete, you can erase any parts you want to erase with vector trim mentioned before. Double tap the touch shortcut making the outside have a frame and trace any parts you don't need like this. This way, as you can see, it keeps erasing these unnecessary parts. And by doing this, you can create a beautiful, a maze-like shape by the end. You can do a lot here with your creative ideas, and this is something you can't really do in Procreate or in Affinity Designer, so I'm hoping to make use of this too. The sixth one is about mixer brushes. In the brush categories, we now have this box out of here at the top way we can find mixer brushes. About mixer brushes, they help mix some colors better when you overglaze colors. We didn't have this before, so let me show you what it is. Right now, I'm using a square mixer brush with blue for color. 
This time using green, I'm going to color over here. Now you can see that the part that's overlap here gets mixed nicely like this. Select a different color again, yellow this time, trace over here. The stronger the pen pressure is, the more it gets mixed, and the weaker it is, the less it gets mixed. So by controlling your pen pressure, you can create a beautiful gradation like this. Similar to this mixed brush, we also have an oil paint brush. The oil paint brush is a brush for oil painting, so let me grab one of these oil paint brushes and trace over here. You can tell by zooming in, but this oil paint brush looks as if the oil is placed on top of the other on a piece of paper, looking a bit puffed up. So this oil paint brush lets you draw in a way as if watercolor is out of here. But with this oil paint brush too, as you paint it over like this, it gets mixed as well. You can tell by zooming in here, but like the mixer brush mentioned before, this one looks as if oil is put on top of the other and mixed all together. It's a bit difficult to explain words, but can you tell that it looks kind of rough? But with the mixer brush, you can create a smooth, beautiful gradation. These tools are difficult to explain, but as you get used to using them, you see the difference. So I really want you to try Adobe Fresco and see the difference between them. At last, I will introduce you to an eyedropper tool. The eyedropper tool can be found here at the bottom, this one right here in the toolbar. So what this tool does is that it basically picks up the color you want to use on the screen. I just pick up a red eyedropper tool, and this is why I can draw here using a red brush. But now this thing called the multicolor eyedropper tool is out of here. So here we can now choose from two different eyedropper tools. The one on the bottom is a multicolor eyedropper tool, so if I place it over here, the red color right here in the same way, there is this button that says multicolor. This color is taken by mixing some colors from the area selected, and that's why they call it multicolor. So as I trace over here with the brush like this, it lets me draw a line with the brush in the color mixed from the area selected. In case you want some blue color, then just select around the area between blue and emerald green, grab this multicolor eyedropper tool, and it automatically creates a beautiful gradation brush like this. If you want to make it a bit more like rainbow, you need to make the eyedropper area smaller, and close the area using the eyedropper tool to do that with the selection tool. Once you made it smaller, grab an eyedropper tool and bring it over here. This way, the multicolor option at the upper right should be rainbow. And as you draw with a brush like this, you get to have more colors in one brush. So in case you want to use many colors, it's better to set the area to pick up the color smaller. Using this feature, you get to create some interesting abstract expressions too, which can be useful for background, etc. Here I have this rainbow this time, but you can do so much more with your creativity, so please give it a try and create something interesting. Alright, that was all about introduction to new features in Adobe Fresco this time. Before I end though, I want to introduce you to someone and she's Asa, who is one of the members in iPadMate, which is an online community that I run. She's an expert of Adobe Fresco, and she draws these amazing illustrations explaining new features and things you need to know in Adobe Fresco through her Twitter. So please follow Asa on Twitter if you're interested. She makes things a lot easier for us to understand with some helpful illustrations, and she's just super awesome, so please follow her Twitter. In iPadMe community too, she often shares all the helpful stuff you can find in Adobe Fresco with our members. So if you want to know more about this stuff, please check out my online community as well. 
I'll leave the link in the description down below. Next time, we'll draw an illustration of this donut using new features in Adobe Fresco mentioned today. We'll especially focus on the use of this mixture brush, a brush that helps mix colors as we draw this donut. So please look forward to seeing the next video. Alright, please give a thumbs up if you like this video, and I hope to see you in my next video. Thank you for watching. Bye bye.